Hello everyone, welcome to KJB Believers, and today we're going to be doing another Discord Bible study. It's going to be hosted by Brother Samuel. Brother Samuel, please take it over. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer, no better way to start. So very well, uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads and hearts to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, just want to thank you for bringing us here together, and uh, I just pray that you would just bless this message, that somebody would get out of it, and that you would uh, just speak through me, Lord. Um, I know that this this issue that I'm going to talk about um, has been has been a problem for quite a while, and I just hope that uh, people would just conform to what the Bible says and uh, accept that they may have made an error. So I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this probably isn't going to be one of the longest messages I've ever preached, but uh, when it comes to preaching, we always try to shoot for quality over quantity. Of course, it's much better to uh, listen to a message that's uh, that's uh, you know f filled with a lot of with a lot of good stuff and uh, has some things that you can get out of it rather than listen to a two hour long sermon uh, that's just dry and dead. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Psalm 111. So if you will go ahead and turn in your King James Bibles to Psalm 111. And of course that's important that you have a King James Bible because uh, what we're gonna see is that the word that we're really going to do a study about here is not found in uh, most of the modern versions. So it's important you have a King James Bible, God's preserved and errant and fallible word. And we're going to be looking at verse number nine, verse number nine. Psalm 111, verse nine. This is what the Bible says, speaking about God. The Bible says this, verse nine. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is his name. And thus the title of this message is Beware of the Man Named Reverend. Beware of the Man Named Reverend. And of course, this verse calls God reverend. And of course, that's what the whole psalm deals with is the subject of God. Of course, in verse 1, you see this. You see, praise ye who? Not man, but praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Verse 2, it says, the works of the Lord are great. Verse 3, his work, whose work? The Lord's work is honorable and glorious. Verse 4, he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. Verse 5, he hath given meat unto them that fear him. Verse 6, he hath showed his people the power of his works. The, verse 7, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. And then we get the verse 9, he sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever, holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is his name. Now, what's interesting is that this is the only time we find the word reverend in the Bible. You can look from cover to cover. You won't find that word appear any other time in the scriptures. So, therefore, it's pretty important that we really understand how it's used since it's only used one time in the scriptures. And, of course, it's a reference to God. It's a reference to God. And it says, holy and reverend is his name, okay? It's pretty clear that that's some kind of title for the Lord, okay? The word reverend is never used in the Bible to refer to a man, not once. Now, of course, in the Bible, we do see the word reverence, okay, which is comes from kind of same kind of the same root word, okay? And reverence would be like kind of like an action where God tells people to reverence him, his name, and certain other things, Okay, and that would be an action. But in regards to someone having this title or the quality of being reverend, it's only uh, reserved for God in the scriptures. Nowhere in the Bible do you see any man, whether he's a minister, a preacher, a evangelist, you don't see any of that. None of those kinds of people in the Bible are called reverend. Only God is. Only God is. And it's quite a curious thing that for the last few centuries— there have been all different types of so-called ministers and preachers from all different types of denominations, whether Methodists or Lutherans. It, it doesn't matter, you know, all different kinds of, um, you know, Calvinists like Presbyterians. So many different denominations use this word and apply it not to God, but rather to man. It's a very interesting thing. Very interesting thing. Because there's no scriptural justification to call any man reverend besides the Lord. But nonetheless, for the last few centuries, you have had all different kinds of people referring to all different kinds of ministers as reverend. 
And what's interesting is that they just couldn't leave it off there, okay? <clears throat> These men couldn't just leave it off at using this, you know, uh, potentially or, you know, borderline blasphemous title as applied to man. They, they couldn't just leave it off at, as calling somebody Reverend John Smith or whatever name you want to insert there. They couldn't just leave it off there, okay? What, what they instead did is for many different ministers throughout the years— is they instead added different other adjectives and really prolonged and uh, really made their title even longer than it was before. Okay, so for, first you have all these people called reverend, which is a title for God, which is, again, that's not very that's not very good. That's not really a position you'd want to be in to be called that. But, but furthermore, they even added different adjectives onto it. So there were many people called the right reverend, you know, the right reverend Smith. People were called the right reverend Father James, you know. People were called the right reverend minister, you know. It's just like all these, you know, extravagant, lavish titles people have tried to give themselves. It's just, it's just laughable. Like all, all of it just sounds, you know, just completely, you know, insane because pe people are just trying to elevate man. So you have people called, you know, the Reverend Mr. Jones. You have people called the Most Reverend, you know, Samuel. You have people called the Very Reverend whatever. Okay, you have all these different titles that people have tried to use and apply to different ministers. Okay, when according to the scriptures, the only one who's reverend is God. Amen. Okay, and what's what's very funny is this is the same thing the Catholic Church does. Okay, mm. so what what they did is they decided that oh you know saying a man was a bishop wasn't good enough, so they were like okay well let's make it an archbishop oh that that sounds much better doesn't it see what they want to do is oftentimes they want to elevate man and you know what the Bible says the Bible says he must increase but mm. I must decrease that's what the Bible says Amen. and that is one of, that is one of the imperatives of the Word of God it says must that is an imperative he must increase, but I must decrease. Okay. It is imperative that the Lord, that God is magnified, but man is abased, that the Lord is brought up high and man is brought low. Okay. And that is an imperative in the word of God. And in order to actually do that and uh, exalt the Lord and put the Lord in the right place in your life and the right position in your life and, you know, abase yourself, lower yourself to the right position is you have to, in order to do that, you have to grow in grace. You have to grow in grace because man's Carnal nature doesn't want to do that. Man's carnal nature wants to make himself God. Man's carnal, carnal nature wants to lift himself up, wants to puff himself up. And what do men do? How do they do that? They do it with all, all these kinds of lavish, long, extravagant titles, titles for themselves. That's what they do because these, they, they want people to think highly of them. And most importantly, they, they want to think that, that they themselves are more highly than they are. And that is one of the ways they do it. They use all these different titles. And, you know, there's all different kinds of, you know, various religious titles that people use in order to try to puff themselves up, to lift themselves up in one way or another. You know, and um, it's interesting because this one doesn't even have any, you know, justification at all scripturally. The only person called reverend in the Bible is God. But, you know, as, you know, as the devil said in Isaiah 14, you know, he wanted to be like the most high. And that's how man wants to be oftentimes. He, wanna, he wants to lift himself up to God's level. And that's what people are doing subconsciously sometimes when they use this phrase to, well, this title, excuse me, to refer to themselves as. And now what I'm not saying is that every single man that has ever used this title is just some minister of Satan and didn't do anything for God. That's not what I'm saying. Don't misunderstand me. And I'm sure that, that, that there have probably been some good, decent, or even great godly men who have used this title, um, but they just weren't wise about it. Yeah. Do, do you know what Job, Job 32 says? Go and turn there with me. Job 32. Job 32 says this. And this is uh, Elihu speaking, which is one of Job's friends. And he, says, and he says something very interesting. I think this definitely does apply here. Job 32, verse 9, he says this. Great men are not always wise. And I believe that is absolutely true. Amen. Great men aren't always wise. You know, David could be David could be considered a great man, but was he always wise? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. There were some times where he, he had shortcomings, he had lapses in judgment, of course. We all know that instance with Bathsheba, that, sure, that certainly wasn't a wise decision, okay? Great men are not always wise, and that's true. And of course, there's two applications to, to that verse, you know? It could mean great as in, you know, 
uh, great as in great in age, old people, you know, because it's taken for granted, which in the Bible, which uh, it's just a basic principle. It's common sense that the older you are, the typically, generally, you're going to have some more wisdom. You're going to have some more life experience. Okay. But there are obviously exceptions to that. You know, of course, somebody who somebody who's very old, you know, say say they're like 76. Okay, that that's old in, in today's standards. Yeah. Okay. Say somebody's 76 and they're an atheist. Well, that that person isn't wise because the Bible says the fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Right. So there are exceptions to that. Okay. But it could mean also great as in dignified and noble, as a great man, a great man of God. And even some great man of God, great men of God are not always wise. And, you know, I, I do know that uh, John Wesley used this used this title. Now, I'm not sure if he willingly used it or people applied it to him. I don't know. I don't know what the circumstance was, okay? Uh, and I know that he may or may not have been a great man. But, um, you know, it could just be that, you know, he had a lapse in judgment and he wasn't wise and he chose to use the term. Yep. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that it is a great error to use this title and apply it to man, Okay. It's very clear that there is no reason scripturally why you should call somebody that when it's a title for God, okay? And what's interesting, what's very interesting is uh, with this whole subject about, you know, lifting man up and man wants to, you know, magnify himself and lift himself up in pride. It's very interesting. According to that same chapter, Job 32, let's read the last two verses. Very interesting. Because oftentimes how, how a person... Um, gets by in the world sometimes, and uh, how somebody uh, lifts himself up is through this means here. Job 32, 21 to 22. The Bible says this. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. Wouldn't you consider reverend a flattering title? Or would you consider father or holy father a flattering title? Yeah. To man, absolutely. Verse twenty-two. For I know, uh, for I know not to give flattering titles. In doing so, my Maker would soon take me away. So what Elihu was saying is that if he used, well, he first agreed that he's not going to use any flattering titles. He's not going to apply those flattering titles to people. And number two, he said that if he did, then God's going to judge him. Okay, and that's probably wise. That's probably that's probably a wise thing to do because the Bible often talks about often talks about flattery. Now, flattery can be used as a tool for great evil, the Bible talks about. You know, uh, it's, it's really the same principle in Romans 16, 18, you know, by good words and fair speeches, you know, it's used to deceive. And that's what flattering is used for many times. And that's what these titles do. They, they, they flatter people. They flatter people. And in doing so, in calling these men this, most of the time what happens is, is it, uh, is it really makes the men think that they're something that they're not. It makes the men think that they are greater than they are because they're using all these lavish titles. And the Bible says about flattery, let's go ahead and turn to, there, there's a ton of verses on this, but let's go and look at Proverbs 29, okay? Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, verse 5, the Bible says this. Proverbs 29, 5, about flattery. It says, a man that flattereth his neighbor, his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Flattering is a trap, folks. Flattering is a trap. And what's interesting is that since flattery is, can be used for such a great evil, uh, many people use it today to uh, meet their evil needs. For instance, politicians nowadays are some of the biggest flatterers you have ever seen in your life. That's right. They they, 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 they just go to and fro and flatter this person and flatter that person so that they can, you know, uh, enlarge their pocketbook and get their support and be able to uh, seek their own personal aggrandizement. That's what a lot of politicians do. And what's very interesting is that similar to a politician, do you know what the Antichrist is going to do? Do you know what he's going to do? Turn to Daniel 11. Daniel chapter number 11. Daniel chapter number 11. Daniel 11, 32. The Bible says this, Daniel eleven thirty two, 32. Referring to the Antichrist, it says, and such do as wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Corrupt by flatteries. So the Antichrist is going to corrupt certain things through his flatteries. He's going to be similar. He's going to you know use flattery similar to a politician. The Antichrist is going to be using flatteries. And of course, you know, you just see in Proverbs how 
you know, the uh, adulterous woman uses flattery and all different kinds of evil people use flattery. You know, the, the serpent in the garden, the serpent in the garden basically used flattery in order to deceive Eve. Okay. We should have nothing to do with flattery and especially flattery for the purpose of deceiving somebody. But what these titles are, what these various religious titles applied to men is they're flattery. They're flattering titles. And we should be like Elihu, where we agree that I'm not going to use a flattering title to describe a man. Yeah. Okay, is these the only man we should be magnifying that highly is the Lord, not yeah. any man, because the reverend in the Bible is not you know Paul or Timothy. Okay, it's the Lord. It's God Almighty. It's not some mortal mere man. Okay, reverend is God. God is reverend. His His name is holy and reverend. The Bible says. Okay, and what's very interesting. What's very interesting is that if we go back to Psalm 111 and look at verse 9, of course it says, holy and reverend is his name. If you read a new version, you won't find the word reverend there, which is very, very interesting. It's very interesting how in the new versions you wouldn't find that. And um, when I was doing this study, I, I was thinking about, okay, well, you know, uh, since many people call themselves this, this uh, title, um, let's see if if that word reverend appears in the new versions. Well, in most of the new versions, they alter the verse and they change the word reverend. They take it out and insert a different word. Okay, I thought that was interesting. And then I searched, okay, and I decided I was going to go and search and see if they added the word reverend anywhere else in the Bible, and they didn't. They removed it out of the text entirely. Hmm. So, for instance, in the NIV... They, they changed the word. They changed it to the word awesome, okay, which, uh, <laughs> which is a, I, I think that's a very silly uh, translation. You know, kind of, kind of makes you think that, you know, you know some, some stoner guy on the street is like, oh, yeah, God's awesome. Like, you know, <laughs> like that, 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 that's not very reverential, okay? But um, what they decided is, okay, you know, we're going to remove reverend and put awesome. Okay, whatever. But what I thought is that, okay, well, maybe – Maybe, maybe they removed the word reverend because maybe they had some reverends on their translation committee. Maybe there was a conflict of interest. So I decided to look on the NIV translation committee. Uh, they actually have an official website that lists their translators. And I found that there are four, four men that were on the translation committee for the NIV who are, who go by the title of reverend. And not only reverend, but all four of them go by the title of reverend doctor, you know. So that they couldn't even have one title, they had to have two titles, reverend doctor. I'll go ahead and list you their names here. These are four different NIV translators. The first one is reverend doctor David Istone Brewer. The second one is reverend doctor Mark Boda. The third one is reverend doctor Andrew G. Sheed. And the fourth one is reverend doctor Paul Schwara. So you have four reverends on the NIV translation committee. So it's very interesting that when, uh, when the NIV translators hit this passage, they decided not to put the word reverend there and decide go for an alternate translation. So maybe there was some kind of conflict of interest. Maybe they decided not to translate the word as reverend because that would kind of condemn them. They were trying to make an alibi for their sin, possibly. I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened, but that's what the translators of the new versions often do. They did that in Romans 1. They did that in many other places. Oftentimes, the translators of modern translations, what they will do is they will alter a passage that condemns what they're doing in order to make an alibi for their sin. So perhaps that's what, that's what was going on here. And, of course, I looked in the, the New King James, you know, and by the way, if you think the New King James is a King James Bible, you're absolutely wrong. Amen. What they claim is that, hey, well, you know, the New King James, we're just updating the language. We're just making it easier to read. And that's a lie. That's, that's a lie. Right. Well, they were revising the text. They were even making a new version, and they were not even using the, the, the same Greek text that the King James was based off of. So they were making a bunch of changes. And um, if, if you really think that, uh, that they were just trying to make it easier to read and just trying to remove those quote-unquote archaic words, well, when they came here to Psalm 111.9, what did they do? They changed reverend to awesome, just like the NIV, which is very interesting because uh, since reverend is used so uh, so commonly by religious leaders in this country, uh, I don't think it could qualify as archaic or out of date because even 
as I looked at their website, there are, again, reverends on the New King James Version Translation Committee. So certainly they couldn't claim the word reverend was outdated because they were using it themselves as a title. And again, once I, what, what I found is that there are four different, four different reverends, and, and, uh, and there, there, there's, there's many more actually on the King, a New King James Translation Committee. But these four were just on the Old Testament. On the Old Testament Translation Committee, you have Reverend E. Clark Copeland. You have Reverend Jeffrey Watts Grogan. You have Reverend William H. McDowell. And you have Reverend Arthur Stelzer. So once again, it's very, you know, it, it's, uh, it's kind of curious that, uh, that these reverends would change the word reverend, maybe to make an alibi for their sin and uh, get away from people uh, making the argument that I am from the scripture that only God is reverend. Well, you know, you can't make that argument if reverend's not in your Bible. Well, it's not in their Bible, so maybe they're trying to make an alibi for their sin. There you go. And, you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, holy and reverend, they're, you know, those are just, ad those are just adjectives, you know, those are just, adject you know, excuse me, adjectives. And I'm like, okay, well, if that's, if, if that's the case, if reverend was just an adjective, then why is it that nowhere in the Bible does, is a man described as reverend? I don't know. Hmm. But... Also, it's like, okay, if you want to use that argument, then why don't you just go to John 17 and just say when, when Jesus is praying to the Father and he says, Holy Father, oh, you know, those are just adjectives, you know, it's not a title, you know, yeah, God is holy and he is, a, it's like, um, no, that's a title. If you want to use that same argument, you can use it in John 17 and justify the Pope being right. called Holy Father, Holy Father, and what, what a thing that is, man, okay? Um, if the Pope is any kind of father, he is the kind of father Martin Luther called him, the most hellish father. That's right. Okay. Amen. But what I want to do is I want to, I want to end with this. If you're not already back there, turn to Psalm 111. And I find it very interesting that that verse nine is followed by a verse talking about the fear of the Lord, which is very interesting. So Psalm 111 verse nine and we'll read to the end, verse 10. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Now, what I find is that is that this whole problem with men calling themselves reverend would probably be completely resolved if they had a healthy fear of the Lord. And it's very interesting how following this verse, the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord. See, if men really did fear the Lord like they should, then they wouldn't seek to usurp his titles and lift themselves up and try to put themselves on his level and try to flatter themselves and try to lift themselves and puff themselves up. If they really feared God, if they had a fear of the Lord, they would put God in his rightful place and leave his titles alone. They wouldn't try to take his titles, co-opt them and put them on themselves. They would leave them alone and put God in his rightful place. And that is really, I think, the problem is that they don't have a healthy fear of the Lord if they are doing such a thing on purpose. And let's go ahead and look at Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 28. Of course, the title of this message was Beware of the Man Named Reverend, which you certainly are because that title is very problematic. I believe it is a great error to call some kind of religious leader that title. You know, Christ said, don't even call any man father. Okay, he was talking about religious leaders. Don't call anyone father, much less holy father. But Matthew 10, 28 says this, and fear not them, which kill the body, but are, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. So number one, beware of the man named Reverend. Beware of a man who co-ops God's title and applies it to himself. Okay, because that is not a good sign. Okay, that could be considered, quote unquote, a red flag. Okay, but number two, you should beware of the real Reverend. You should beware of God. You should have a healthy fear of God. You should have a fear of the Lord and desire not to take his titles and try to apply, apply them to yourself. But you should have a fear of God and seek to please him. And, of course, as the Bible says, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. 
I'm going to go ahead and end with a word of prayer, dear Heavenly Father. So thank you for your word. Thank you for preserving it for us so that we could read it and understand and you could show us things, show us wondrous things out of your word. I pray that this message is uh, profitable and it was just a blessing to the brethren. I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.